using all this green screen equipment that we've got, we can now see the environment you're in. Okay, so you can see me in the scene? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. To do the actual VR fire investigation, then all you need is a gaming laptop, headset and the hand controllers, and a space big enough to do it in. Okay, James, so now you're in VR in a green screen studio, what does it feel like? It feels odd and a little bit surreal that I was in a, obviously a green room, literally, two seconds ago, and now I've just put this headset on, and I feel like I'm somewhere else. So in front of you, you can see a container, and that's where your training scenario is gonna be. Yep. And uh, we want you to move, obviously, towards that container, but first we'll get you to move by teleporting. Okay. If you can teleport into that square by using your thumb on the center disc. Yep. That's it. Okay, so you've just teleported into this area. How did that feel, James? Quite surreal, actually. Obviously, I was stood over there a second ago, and now I'm here. Uh, but already, I feel like I'm here, as it were. Obviously, there's a fire scene on the other side of that door. Yeah. But you can move around your scene now by walking rather than teleporting, if you want to. Okay. Okay, so I want you to go through this door, James, and you'll see that you've got your fire scene inside this room. So if you look down to the door handle, reach out, and it'll turn blue. Pull the trigger. Now take a couple of steps inside and just have a look at the scene and just tell me what you think. Well, I wasn't expecting to see this. It, it, it's identical to a real fire scene. I'm so gobsmacked by what I can see. When you compare this to what, what's in the real world, I genuinely feel like I'm in a real fire scene. I'm looking around, I can see plume patterns on the ceiling. There's a hole in the ceiling above where the fire's clearly progressed up the wall and charred the cupboards. The, there's burn patterns that I can look at what appears to be marks on the wall where water's been applied through firefighting. To, to say I'm surprised is an understatement. This genuinely feels like I'm in a real fire scene. So it's a real benefit for trainees then? It's huge, isn't it? The fact that we can do this virtually when the experience is as real as it can possibly be and it's so close to reality, and the fact that you don't have to do a real burn to recreate this is clearly a massive, massive advantage. So obviously, uh, in, a, in a real scenario, there's a process that we carry out for fire investigation. Yeah. And you would work your way through the scene methodically. Yeah. But just to show you how we can use this piece of equipment, if you can walk forward towards the cooker. Okay, you want me to walk forwards now? Yeah, just walk forward towards the cooker. I know you're walking over a scene, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Yeah. And if you stop and look at the frying pan, for instance, in front of you, you can reach down and you can pick that frying pan up the same way as you operated the controls when you opened the door to enter the compartment. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. And is that what you'd expect to see in a fire scene? I can't believe I can pick these things up and look at it from, from all angles. Can I, can I change hands with it too? Yeah, so if you touch it with the other hand, you can pass it from hand to hand. So can you tell what's in the pan, for instance? Yeah, clearly there's sausages and what looks like burnt paper, perhaps, or part of the ceiling. I don't know whether it's fallen down, but it really is unbelievable that I can do this in virtual reality, because this is exactly what I would be doing at a real fire scene. In virtual reality, you can either replace it yourself or you can reset where it was from. So if you do make a mistake yeah. while you're carrying out your investigation, by pressing the bottom part of your thumb pad, right. reset item, it'll put it back exactly where it was. Well, there you go. That's a perfect example why this is such a useful training tool, because if yeah. people are making mistakes, then we can put things back, which yeah. we obviously we can't do in the real world. No, that's right. Okay, so what we did there was we've replaced an item that we'd moved maybe we shouldn't have done. And likewise, if you were to move that chopping board and knock a few items out of place, you can go to the menu and reset all those objects back where they were. Oh, fantastic, yeah. You, you certainly can't do that in a real scene. No, not at all. So now I've, I know I have the ability to pick up items and examine them here. Am I able to take them outside or in, in better light to examine them closer? Yeah, so what you can do is you can evidence any item within that compartment okay. and it'll go out into the lab and sit on one of the benches for you to look at later on if you want to. Try that with the toaster. So pick it up as I would? Yeah, pick it up as normal. Okay. And you'll notice you've got an evidence item button. Yeah. If you click the evidence item button, that will then go out into the lab. So yeah, so that's now out in the lab, and we can have a look at that later on. Okay, great. Okay, okay so if you look up above you now, yeah. you'll see you've got various tools that a fire investigator would use. Okay. Left-hand side is an evidence marker that you can use in conjunction with your camera. Go hand out torch. Obviously a digital camera, a dictaphone that you'd use instead of writing contemporaneous notes, and that records what you're describing in the scene so we can play that back to the student. A gas detector, and then you've got scene lights. Okay. okay so if we just start off with lighting, if you uh, use the torch and have a look at your scene with the torch and just tell me what you think. Wow. 
it, it's no different from a real torch. And the fact that the shadows, I can't believe there are shadows. And the fact that I can see down the side of the cooker, for example, it's so lifelike, it's unbelievable that you can do that and create shadows with this torch. Okay, so if we want more illumination within the scene, then what we can use is the scene lights. So if you let go of the torch, Okay. And uh, take one of the scene lights and position it in the location that highlights what you want to look at next. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and you can take another one, you can move them around. So what we'll look at next then is the camera. So if you set your one of your scene lights to something that you want to... Okay. And then take your camera. Yeah. And just take a series of photographs with your camera. So I can see that that control knob's on. So I can take as many photographs as I want? Yeah, unlimited photographs. And then perhaps if I... This is brilliant. Okay, and those photographs are being stored, so you can review them later, which when we go out and look at the evidence, we'll have a look at your photographs as well. Okay. That's fantastic, that is. That's okay. super. Yep. Okay, James, so you've got used to all the equipment that you've got and you've got used to the hand controls. What I want you to do now is examine the scene just briefly using those tools. Okay, well, we'll have a look at the, uh, the cooker to start with. So I would, first of all, use my lighting just to improve what I can see of it. And I'm noting that the controls are in certain positions. So I've got the dictaphone, which I will use. Examination of the gas cooker, four ring hob, I can see that the front right hand control knob is in the on position. Uh, all other remaining knobs are in the off position. We'll take a few photographs of those positions to show and have a record. And move that light around for a better shot. Okay, and then remove the gas cooker and examine that in a closer detail outside. So we will remove the, the uh, frying pan, the pot, the stands can be removed, and then the cooker itself, we can evidence that too. And I'll go and look at that in more detail outside in the lab. Having removed the cooker, I'm going to look at the heater that's at the other side of the kitchen, which is behind me. Quick check of the, with the torch because I'm interested in whether this heater is plugged in and switched on or not. I can see from here it's not switched on, although it is plugged in. Record that contemporaneously. An electric heater plugged into the right hand outlet of a double socket outlet, uh, however, is switched off at the wall. And then I will use an evidence marker in case this heater needs to be looked at later. Okay, having used the evidence marker to clearly identify the evidence I'm recovering, I'm taking a photograph of it in situ, showing the socket and the evidence marker. Uh, and now happy that that's been recorded. I'll now remove the heater so that, that can be evidence for future examination if required. So James, as you leave the compartment now, you can actually walk instead of teleport, but on your way out, I want you to evidence the two chairs either side of the table yep. and the fridge and the toaster or sandwich maker that's on top of the fridge, okay? Okay. And then make your way out into the lab. Okay. Okay then, James, so what you can see there is in that yellow grid is where you've reconstructed your scene and obviously the more items you put in, they're put into that grid in the scale of the scene that you were working in. And then on the benches across the lab, you've got all the items that you've evidenced and you can go and examine them individually. So it's replaced the items outside as they were inside? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, now that they're outside then, I can have a much closer look. It's such a useful tool, this you would do this at a real scene. Now that the oven's outside, for example, you can see much more clearly than it was on, um, which highlights the benefit of scene reconstruction. But the fact that it puts it exactly where it was inside is so useful. 
Okay, so if you approach the bench now and have a look at the items and then tell me why you think it's beneficial to have these items out here. Okay, so we'll have a look at the heater. The fact that fire scenes are inherently dark because of the, uh, obviously the lack of light and the fact that they're black from the soot means that exhibits that you want to look at in detail once they've been recorded, getting those outside in natural light or much brighter light enables you to examine them in far greater detail. A heater similar to this was in a fire where in the scene it wasn't visible but when we brought the heater outside you could see along the top of the uh, heater where there'd been some clothing draped over it. It was only fine particles that were left but if, had we not done this outside we would never have seen it. Yeah. Okay, James, so let's have a look at the menu function. If you look to your left and open up your menu by pressing the menu button, okay. you'll see you've got various functions there in front of you. Yeah. Uh, have a quick look at the backstory. So if you click on backstory and just scroll through that, that's the information you'd gather as a fire investigator from the officer in charge and various other people when you turned up. So it gives you a backstory on how the fire may have occurred. Okay. Um, we'll look at videos in a moment, but if you go to your student photos now, and then you can look through those photos and you tell me what you think not only is it impressive, it's extremely weird that I can look through virtual photographs that I've taken in a, a virtual world as if it was real. And that's, uh, that's quite strange. Okay. But yeah, very, very good. So come out of that. Okay. Uh, then you can go to uh, videos. Okay. And what we've got here is a burn video and, the, and a video if we've used the dog at the scene. Let's click on the dog. Oh right, so had I requested a fire investigation dog, I would have actually got one. So obviously you can use the dog to determine whether you've got accelerants in the scene. Let's come out of the dog scene now. Okay. So go back to the videos again on your menu. And now go to the burn. And the burn is basically what we show the students at the end. Yeah. So they can see how the fire started and if they were correct okay. in their determination. I'm not sure if I want to press this. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how the, where the fire started. I can, yeah. Whenever do you get the opportunity in the real world to go back in time, which is what we've effectively done, and see the fire start and develop? Well, the other thing as well is if you compare it to live burn scenes, you can't stay in the, the scene while the burn's occurring. And, and do you know what? There's an urge for me to want to get out. Yeah. Because <laughs> I really feel like I'm in here and I shouldn't be. Okay. Come out of that then. Okay. And obviously that video will play all the way through to the end, to the point where you'll know exactly what happened with the fire, and how it developed. Okay, James, so you're all finished. I'm going to join you on the green screen. Okay. Okay, so you can take your headset off and put your hand controllers down. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> that, is, that is weird. So, how was that as an experience? Not what I was expecting at all. In what way? Well, I I think if someone had said to me that you could do our job, uh, fire investigation, in a, in a virtual world, I would have been very sceptical. And why though? I, I'm, I'm just, just something I've never seen before. I was expecting you know, like a, a video game at home, for example, where mm -hmm. you're playing a game and you can be quite immersed in that game, but you know you're at home in your living room. But uh, the fact that that unit, and the fact that I'm actually pointing to, <laughs> yeah. to nothing, there's, yeah. there's, for me, there's a unit over there somewhere. And I feel like I've been in two places. It's, it's that real. I was exactly the same when I first tried it and you had that sort of, you do refer to things and when you refer to things you point to where they were yeah. and we're studying the green screen here, aren't I we? And I know I've been in this room all day but I genuinely feel like I've been in two places because that scene, and I'm going to point to it again, that I'm so used to seeing over there and the lab that's there, it, it's a real experience and like a video game, that will be something that will stick with me. Yes, it gives you like a, a training memory, doesn't it? Of something yeah. that, so it's like going to a real scene and, yeah. and digging out a real scene. So as a training tool then, the advantages of using it over burning a real scene? Yeah. What, what would you well, say they were? I think there's, there's quite a few, isn't there? The first, first and obvious one is that to recreate a real fire scene, you've got the, the health and safety aspect, the cost, yeah. and the fact that it's potentially just one use. The, the scene that we've just looked at, or I've just looked at, is obviously it's not harmful. There's no dust, there's no sharps, so I'm perfectly safe. So from a safety point of view, it's far better than a real scene. And unlike a real scene, that can be repeated. And like you just said, yeah. as a student, if I make a mistake and maybe do something I shouldn't have done, it can be undone and put back to how it was before. And then the tutor or the, the, the trainer can point out, this is what you did wrong, let's put it back, let's show you how you should do it properly. Well, the other thing as well is you think the cost implications of doing the amount of scenes you would do in your brigade or in your organisation to train the personnel you had. Yeah. Whereas you've, we've got a 
a load of VR scenes that we can use, and uh -huh. they change the scene every time you use it for different people. Yeah. So you keep that, you know, you keep the, the variety, don't you? Yeah, when you're training right. as well at no extra cost, really. No, that's right. But as we well know, that it's it's not so much always you must find what the cause of the fire that's is. That's right. It's the process. Yeah, yeah. And the process that we use at real fire scenes, it's no different. Okay. Nice one. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay. No problem.